I don't want you to spend months setting up Notion to then find out that it's not good for your business. Because all that glitters in Notion is not gold. Let's be frank. I've been using Notion for almost 1,802 days and I have helped over 70 businesses to onboard into the app. But I have also told some businesses not to use Notion. While I believe that this app is amazing, my whole business runs on it, it's got some limitations. So in this video, I wanna save you the trouble of setting up your whole system to then find out that, oh fuck, that this feature is not in Notion. Okay, so here are the considerations that you have to have before diving into the app. So first of all, integration limitations. Okay, the whole idea of using Notion for our business is so this app becomes the central hub of everything. So this means that all our different apps are gonna be connected to it. And with apps, I mean uh, Calendly to book calls, Stripe to receive payments, Typeform for form submissions, DocuSign for sending contracts. So we want that everything is connected to Notion. But there is a caveat here, and is that the list of native integrations that Notion have are quite limited. So what does this mean? That for doing most of this, you are gonna need a third-party tool like Zapier or Make to connect Notion to all those apps. So why is this bad? Well, it's another tool that you need to pay for. And second, the setup, it can be a little bit trickier versus having a native integration. Now, the second thing to consider is email privacy. So once you get your Notion workspace set up, everyone that you add into your workspace is gonna have access to everyone else's emails. So I will just have to come to settings and members and here I'm gonna be able to see the emails of everyone. If there are clients, I'm gonna see older clients, for example. So this is also something to consider. Third, it is a lack of an offline version. This has been one of the most requested features, but still, so many years later, Notion still haven't told us anything about this feature. So for example, if you travel a lot and you wanna work in your flights, you will not be able to do so in Notion. Or if you live in a place with poor connectivity, also the same. And I wouldn't start building on the app with the hopes that this feature may be released in the future because we just don't know. So it's quite risky. Next one is client portals. Most of the clients that I work with are agencies and they want to create a client portal for their clients so they can communicate through the portal so their clients can see what they are working on so they don't ask so many questions and etc. The only way in Notion to do this securely and this means preventing that all of your clients have access to all the client's tasks that you have in your system, it is to build new databases per client. So this will mean one task database per client. Because if we are to use one single database for all the clients, technically all your clients are gonna need access to the whole database. And they're gonna be able, technically, to see all your client's tasks and that's not what we want. So this is the limitation. A way that I have found to work around this is to, yes, keep separate databases for all the clients, but then in my internal task database, I just have a task which says, check Peter's mm, tasks, and Peter is a client. And with this task, I just go to Peter's dashboard and I just see everything that needs to get done. But this is not a very good solution if we have multiple team members acting on a client's project. So just bear this in mind. Next one, handling large data sets. Notion speed has improved. There is no doubt about it, but it still struggles with very, very large sets of data. And what do I mean by very large? Let's say that you have a thousand or thousand plus rows in a database and you want to show all of them on the screen at the same time, Notion's going to struggle. It is gonna feel slow. So for example, this happens to me because all my finances are inside of Notion. So every income and every expense that I have is one row in my finances database. So what do I do? I have filtered views. So if I'm just seeing a small subset of rows of the database, then there is no problem. So here the problem will be if you need to visualize large sets of data often because the Notion would not be the perfect solution. And I will recommend you going to Airtable or even Google Sheets, for example. Next one on the list is security needs. Okay, while Notion security has improved over time, that is true, but it may still fall short for certain and specific kinds of businesses. For example, there is no end-to-end -end encryption. And if your business is in the healthcare industry, 
Notion is not HIPAA compliant, so you will not want to store any medical records of your patients inside of Notion. I mean, I personally don't care because I don't have any of this sensitive information, but some of my clients want to, and I have to tell them not to use Notion for those cases. Next one, it is specialization versus flexibility. What do I mean by this? The flexibility of Notion is one of its major powers. But like everything in life, for any time that we win something, we lose something. So in this case, what are we losing? Speciality. So while we are able to create a CRM inside of Notion, Notion is not going to be the best CRM. For example, and this is also one of the main limitations that I look for in the discovery calls with my clients is whether they need to be able to send emails from Notion to their leads. Because this is a typical feature that most CRM will have, but you cannot do that in Notion. You can set up Notion so it reminds you that you have to contact a certain lead, but then you will have to go to your email provider, search for the email and send the email there. So if you need something very specialized, you may have to use Notion in conjunction with that other tool or just other tools altogether. And lastly, we have the learning curve. Notion, it is a little bit hard to understand in the beginning. I know because it took me, I don't know, six months to understand how to use the app. So this means that it's not suitable for everyone. You may not have the time to spend to learn a more complex tool, to build your own thing, to follow the best practices so you don't turn your workspace into chaos. And that is why people like me exist, to help busy business owners set everything up for them and just explain them how to use it. So now, if none of these points have deterred you from using Notion and you're still here and you still want to use the tool, then I have left in the description of this video a guide with the step-by-step -step process that I always follow with every business when we are going to set up their Notion and automation systems. And at the end of the guide, you will also find a way to work directly with me and my team. So that is it for today, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.